As the title of our today's video suggests, hacking is not an easy job. If you learn to use a few tools and think that you are a hacker, then I apologize you are not. Nobody becomes a hacker just by learning a few hacking tools. Okay, let me make you understand this with a little example. If you are already into these things, you may have used Metasploit once for creating a simple payload and for hacking into your own computer. Do you think that's all? If the victim doesn't open the payload made by you, then what? You can't do anything. In real cases, you are given an IP address and, in a few cases, a little bit more information about your target, and you have to find everything else by yourself. Once the hacker has an IP address, the first thing he does is gather more and more information about his target. This is a very important step in any hacking attack or penetration test. This step is called reconnaissance, in which we gather as much information about our target as we can. But moving forward, let me make it clear that this video is only for educational purposes. We don't support any kind of illegal activity, and it is highly discouraged. In reconnaissance first, we ping the IP address to check if our target is online so that we can perform later attacks. After we verify that our target is online, we need to find open ports in our targeted system. This job is mostly done by tools like Nmap or RustScan. Nmap is an old tool that is mostly used by hackers and has a lot of capabilities. RustScan is the latest tool for port scanning, written in the Rust language, and believe me, it's very fast. A port scan tells us about the open ports in a system. Ports are like the doors of a system. Different types of services run on different ports like SSH or Secure Shell, which is a service used to connect to a remote computer and runs on port 22. OK, after a port scan, we come to know about different ports. As mentioned earlier, each port has a specific service running on it. Now we scan and research each service running on each port to discover vulnerabilities so that we can exploit them and get into the system. This process is called exploitation. For example, port 80 has a web server that might be hosting a website. We can test the website to check if it has any vulnerabilities, like local file inclusion or cross-site scripting that can be exploited. Similarly, one of the most dangerous attacks in history, the WannaCry ransomware, exploited the SMB protocol and encrypted the useful data. The exploitation process is conducted using different tools like Netcat, Metasploit and many others. After successfully exploiting a system, we need to escalate our privileges to the root user so that we have full system access and can do everything we want. This step is called privilege escalation. Privilege escalation is not always very easy. This step mostly exploits inappropriate file permissions, etc., to escalate our privileges to the root user. After escalating privileges, we need to create persistence in our targeted system for later access, so that every time we come back or the victim restarts their computer, we can easily have access to it without doing everything again. This could also be useful if the victim patches the vulnerability. The process of maintaining persistence in the target mainly includes generating a backdoor and putting it into the victim system with high privileges. After we maintain persistent access to the victim system, the next phase is to cover our tracks. We need to remove the traces of our presence from the system so that we can minimize the risk of being caught. In real cases, we also have to take care of many things like alerts, firewalls and many others. But this was a brief overview of how a penetration test is conducted and how actual hacking looks. There is a lot of difference between being a script kitty and being a real hacker. Instead of learning different tools, learn how everything actually works. This will help you improve your skills and help you become a good hacker. All right, everyone, this is all I have for you in this video. If you found this video useful, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up for more cybersecurity-related content.